What's up, everybody? We got some of this monster. That was not a super obvious attempt at trying to get a sponsorship. <laughs> Let's hear your uh, plug right now. Elevator pitch. Why you? Man, that's the best water I've ever had in my life. If Monster makes water? What? What about for Prime? Do you want to be sponsored by Prime? Yeah, let's go, man. <laughs> I'm trying to get some money. Let's go. <laughs> let's get some proper Prime connection. All right. Well, how are you feeling back here with a win? I feel great, man. This is like, this, this sport's such a fucking roller coaster. Like, I felt bulletproof all week. And then there's just like a few hours this morning where it just fucking sucks. You're like, dude, why do I do this? And then like an hour later, you're like, I don't think anybody in the world can beat me. And then it's like, it's just back and forth. Like, can you see, it's like, it's like a fucking annoying roommate in your head, like just swinging all over the place. You know, I'm like, can I just have some consistency in my head? But, you know, really happy with the performance. Once we got here and started warming up, I felt really controlled. I felt, I felt calm. I felt sharp. This was the loosest I've ever felt in there. This is the most relaxed I've ever felt. It's the most it's ever felt like play to me. Um, I had some amazing coaches train me this camp, and um, my little sister came came down to Vegas to watch, and she's an osteopath, so she gave me like a treatment today, just keeping me loose. She gave me like a weekly treatment just to keep my body healthy, and I just felt like once we started cracking the mitts, I'm like, oh, I, I'm for sure as sharp as I've ever been, like the, the sharpest I've ever been right now. I feel really good. So when we got in there, I just felt like I had a really good understanding of the distance. I felt like I got a good read on his, his timing and, and I was able to find where he was in front of me quite easily. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling really good about that. Okay, first, I need to know what an osteopath is. So an osteopath is like, um, it's like a type of therapy that's like the whole body. So they go over like muscles, joints, lymph, lymph the lymphatic system, kind of um, take into consideration like your diet, things like that. So it's like, oh, you, I, I'm probably butchering this and she's, you know, probably going to be like, dude, have you never listened to what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, it's, it, it takes kind of everything about the human body into consideration. So it's not just like, oh, your ankles hurt. Let's move your ankle around a bunch. She's like, yeah, your ankles hurt because look at your hips. Like you walk all messed up. Like, let's fix that. And why do you walk like that? Oh, because you sit like this all day. Like, you know, it's kind of like a very, very, it's like, seems very solution based rather than just like treat the pro treat just like what's sore thing type, uh, type therapy. And then my next question is, I want to know what the roommate in your head is telling you in those two hours that you say is the worst. Just like, I don't know. Just like you, 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 I don't know if I want to get into that. <laughs> That's, you just have like every, doubt about yourself in your head it's just like you know part of you like do you belong here and stuff it's like fuck man of course I do like I've put so much work into this and it's just like you know I don't know but then you have you have I have a lot of moments like all week I felt bulletproof I've got an amazing mental coach and uh, Danny Patterson and, and he's been giving me tools to battle that so I really like tripled down on that throughout the day especially once we got here and once we got here I was like oh I feel fucking amazing but you know it's uh it's still something you have to kind of battle sometimes right like you have to fight fight uh negative thoughts in your head and and stay positive and and believe in the training and and have faith in yourself and have faith in the process and your coaches and and just trust that that things will turn out well right like it's you know you have kind of thoughts like that every time you fight and yet I'm, I'm doing pretty well so far in the career. I'm nine wins, one loss, one draw, nine first round stoppages. Um, I don't know how long that one went as far as like when it stopped in the, in the within the round. But I mean, it's like, you know, you've had those, those thoughts before and you came through and, and looked great in the past. So just trust and believe and have faith that, that you're gonna do it again. Do those thoughts come back harder after a loss? I would imagine they would. Um, it's been, it's gonna sound arrogant, but it's been a while since I lost. <laughs> um, 
No, I mean, they're, they're, it's pretty consistent either way, you know, like, you're always going to have a little bit of that, so you just have to be, like, ready to, to battle against it. It's almost like you can be in, in great physical shape, but you can still gas out, right? So you, you, you do the things necessary to make sure you don't gas out. You can, you can be as confident as you want, but you're still going to have, like, the, kind of that voice in the back of your head, and you got to be able to battle against it. I know you weren't in there very long with your opponent, but was there anything that surprised you about him? Um, I felt like I got a read on him pretty quickly when he was looking to, to throw big or kick. I, I felt like I was out of the way before he was really able to, to get anything going. Um, tons of respect for the guy. He's a buddy of mine. I found out about the fight from him. I found out uh, he messaged me and he's like, hey man, uh, UFC gave me you, uh, no hard feelings, like hope we can put on a good show. And I was like, what the hell is he talking about? I had accepted another fight. I had somebody else I was, I was ready to fight. So I scroll through my messages and my manager messages me. He's like, hey, other guy pulled out. This is the new guy. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, you know, basically just said to him, like, we're going to keep it professional. We're going to fight hard. Like, I know I'm not going to take it easy on you. You're not going to take it easy on me. We're going to fight as hard as we can, show what MMA in Canada is all about. And then uh, we'll grab a beer after and be boys again. And I, open invite back to Niagara. We, 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 uh, we trained together once in Niagara uh, over a week. And Johan, open invite to, to coming back. Uh, to training with us and training with me. I'd love to work together. I hope you're the last Canadian I ever have to fight, and uh, I hope we can help bring up Canadian MMA. And on that note, you made a big uh, plea for the UFC to come back to Canada. Jasmine was back here. She made the same plea. Can you uh, just talk to me about why that's so important to Canadian MMA? I just think back to being a 19-year-old kid. I had just made my pro MMA debut, and I was at the first UFC fight in Toronto, and it was in the Rogers Center, the Sky Dome at the time, I think. 60,000 people sold out, and it was the most inspiring thing I'd ever been to. You know, Up until that point, until like a few months before that, this was in 2011, um, MMA had been illegal in Ontario. You couldn't get it sanctioned, so the only fights I'd been to in Ontario were on the native reservation. And um, so it was like, you know, regional fights, local guys, but then you see like all these stars that I've looked up to since I was like 13 years old and I'm like, that guy's in this room, he's right there fighting. Like, it was so inspirational and uh, it just really made me want to take my training to the next level and it, seeing other Canadians and other guys from Ontario fight on that card, like Mark Hominick fighting for the world title on that card and seeing Mark Bocek and, and George St. Pierre and all these other Canadians fight on that card. It's like, dude, I've got to be the next guy. Like, I can do this. I can follow in their footsteps. It's like, shocker. I'm about to cry. Shocker. Who, who saw that coming? But, um, like, it just feels good to, to know that, like, I've got, I've did that. You know, I'm doing that now. And would it need to be in Toronto? I'm thinking. Or do you care? I don't care where it is in Canada. I don't care if it's in Moose Jaw, man. Like, we can go anywhere. You know. Um, we can go Toronto, Halifax, Winnipeg, Vancouver, Edmonton. I don't care, man. I want to fight at home. I want to see Canadian flags in, in the crowd while, I, while I'm walking around post-win. You know, like, that's, that's what I want. That's a dream come true for me. And I guess my last question is, um, if Canada is on or off the table, how quick do you want to get back in there? Um, so I had this fight, and I had a, a grappling match I was training for for a while in December, like end of December, right before the new year. So I ran straight from preparing for that straight into this. There was no break. So, you know, I, I train year round full time anyway, but um, just like having things to prepare for on a date is a little taxing. So I wouldn't mind having a few weeks of not having a date on my mind. But tentatively, I'd love to say June would be awesome. July would be awesome at latest August. That way we can get three in. We've got February 25th. If we can do June or July and then get back in there in the fall or December, that's three for the year. I'd be really happy with that. Thank you. Just one question for me. I don't know if you actually got a chance to watch Jasmine's fight because she was back here kind of, you know, just like what you're saying, wanting to carry that banner for, for Canada. And she mentioned how she wants to be like the, 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 just be like GSP and help carry the banner. But she said she's not as nice as GSP, <laughs> that she's a little bit meaner. Um, I don't know, I guess, what's your thoughts on, I guess you didn't see her performance, but what are your thoughts on her overall as an MMA fighter? 
So I, I'd walk over to the TV and see little things from her fight. I saw her on top a bunch. I saw her landing some some good shots. I was really proud of her. But I, I you know, as much as I wanted to watch her, I didn't want to get distracted from from the task at hand. I wanted to stay focused on my job. And I can go back and watch that tonight, which I will. And I'm sure you know our team will watch the fights together. Um, but yeah, man, I'm super proud of her. She's super nice, man. I don't know where she's saying that. You know, like she's a super nice person. I love Jasmine, right? Like she's been. Uh, I, I met her before she started this journey, right? Like I met Jasmine through uh, her boyfriend, who's both of our wrestling coaches. It was like their second or third date or something like that. And we were just all hanging out at his house. And she's like, man, you fight MMA? Like, that's pretty cool. Like, I, I'm, I'd love to try that someday. That'd be super cool. And you're like, yeah, sure. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, people say that all the time. Like, oh, yeah, I'd love to, love to do that. I flew from Ontario back to California where I was living at the time and training. Came back six months later and Prickett was like, my wrestling coach Prickett was like, dude, Jasmine hasn't missed a day of training since you, you guys hung out. I'm like, seriously? He's like, yeah, she's got her first boxing fight coming up. So I was already, I had already fought in Bellator. I already fought in World Series of Fighting. I was always a professional fighter. I was already living in California training. She was like, oh, that'd be cool to fight in the UFC and beat me to the UFC. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. And I guess to that, you know, maybe this is a, you know, most of us think that Canadians are super nice. So maybe she's saying that she's meaner than G GSP, but she's got a smile on her face. Is that, that's just the Canadian mean for you right there, huh? with the smile on their face? Yeah, maybe, right? You know, I mean, we've all got that side to us, right? We can all, you know, I'm pretty sure every fighter can can pull a, a mean side of them out. But uh, no, Jazz is, Jazz is the best. Congrats on the victory. Thank you so much.